Hey everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We've got a pretty cool Photoshop tutorial for you today. We're going to talk about creating this epic style movie poster image. We're not actually going to create the movie poster and all that stuff. We're simply going to take a photo of a guy with some window light hitting his face and turn it into like this gnarly looking poster style image. It's going to be pretty cool. Over on my website, before we get going, I've got a whole course on how to retouch images and how I like to retouch images. Some of my best tutorials that I've brought together. You can down, purchase it and download it. 27 bucks. It supports the site. It's great. It'd be awesome if you would do it. But even if you can't or you don't or you won't, there's still all these free tutorials and I love you just as much. Know that. Let's get started with this tutorial. Uh, we have this image and we have this American flag image. I have these available. There, there are links down in the uh, video description and you can grab them both. They're both free stock photos. So let's get going with this. Once again, as we've been doing this entire week, the theme is all about calculations and the power of calculations. So we're going to kick this off with, you guessed it, calculations. Let's go ahead and uh, apply a calculation adjustment here. I already know what I want. I want to make sure I'm working on the background layers, right? I'm applying background layer to background layer, but the channel that I'm going to apply is the red channel. I'm going to apply a red channel to red channel using the blending mode add. And you can see what this is going to do is we're really just trying to get a nice sort of soft-ish reflection, uh, I'm sorry, reflection, selection of the face. So I'm going to say, all right, that's great. I need to make sure this is going to result in a new channel. Uh, offset of negative 65 actually works just about perfectly for us. I like negative 65 for this particular image. Go ahead and hit OK. And it looks like we haven't done anything. We have, though. We've added an alpha channel. See, we're no longer working here in our RGB composite. We actually just had the alpha channel selected. Uh, let's work on this here a little bit. Let's hit Command or Control L to bring up levels. We're applying a levels adjustment just to this alpha channel, not to any of the actual color channels that go into creating our images or our image excuse me this RGB image that we look at is composed of a red green and blue channel any alpha channels alpha channel is just a stored selection that's composed of light values right white is a full-on 100% opacity selection black is a full-on no percent opacity selection ie not a selection at all and gray stuff is like sort of you know 50% opacity or thereabouts depending on how light or dark the gray is my key or the thing I'm working on here is just reducing all the color around here I just want his face to be isolated so I'm gonna boost the blacks a little bit and I'm gonna boost the whites a little bit maybe something like that bring the whites up just a touch I don't want to lose like the texture of his face you can see we got a big hot spot right up there it's a little warm for my liking, or it's a little hot for my liking, I should say. I'm going to just tone it back a little bit. Hit OK. And now I'm going to grab uh, my brush tool, and I'm going to set it to a blend mode of normal. Opacity should be 100%. My foreground color should be black, and I'm just going to paint everywhere in this image. I'm going to paint all of this other stuff black. Black, remember, that just means nothing in that uh, area is going to be selected. So we've just isolated his face now, and we will just be selecting his face. So I'm going to just fade away uh, the highlight here in the hair as well. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I want it to be reasonably nice. Now I'm going to set my blend mode to soft light, reduce the opacity to about 50%, flip my foreground and background color, so I'm painting with white, and I'm going to paint over his face, just about like one pass, something like that, just with some white. There we go, that looks good. I'm going to turn on my RGB channel. In fact, I'm going to select my RGB channel and shut off my Alpha 1 channel. I'm going to go back to my Layers uh, panel. Now that we have that selection of his face, uh, what we want to do is duplicate this image to prepare what's called a displacement mask. So we're going to go Image Duplicate, and I'm going to name this image Displace. All right, you can see, there we go, we've duplicated the image displays. I'm going to go Image Adjustments Desaturate. It's going to make our image black and white, great. Now I'm going to go Image Adjustments uh, Levels. We can go Levels or Curves, maybe we'll go Curves just for the heck of it here so we can explore this a little bit. We're going to add a, a, a anchor point on the line here and pull down. All right, we're just looking to increase contrast. We're going to add an anchor point to the line up here and we're going to pull up on the contrast just like that. In fact, I'm going to pull up on this darker point down here. There we go, something like that. Maybe I'll boost my mid-tones a smidge more. There we go, something like that is cool. Hit OK. And we're going to go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And something like 10 to 15 pixels is usually good. I'm going to stick with 10 for the size of this image. Hit OK. And now we need to save this image as a PSD. So save as. We're going to save it here on our desktop. Displace.psd. Save. Saying, hey, it already exists. I'm going to say replace it because I was playing around with it before. Close that Displace.psd. Now we're back in our original image. Let's go ahead now and grab the flag. I'm just going to drag it over into my image, right? Drag it, drop it, boom, here we are. 
I'm going to right click on the flag. Uh, I'm not going to right click on the flag. I'm going to hit Command or Control T. I'm sorry. And then I'm going to right click on the flag and hit Flip Vertical. And the flag's upside down. I'm not sure if that's proper flag etiquette. Somebody leave me a comment. Let me know. I'm always up for learning. Hold down the Shift key and just pull to the right. And we rotate the flag to a little bit more of a proper position, if you will. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to commit that change. Before I start scaling this, I'm going to right click on the flag layer and just choose Convert to Smart Object in case I decide I need to scale it larger or smaller later on. Command or Control T once again to get into the flag. Hold down the Shift key and just scale this down but maintain proportions and move the flag so it's over his face. I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit more. There we go. Something like that's cool. All right. That that is probably good. Hit the check icon to commit the changes. Now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and displace the flag over his face. And we're going to do that by going Filter, Distort, Displace. I like to work with Displace typically, and I think it's the default horizontal scale and vertical scale of 10. Stretch to fit is great. Undefined areas, I typically choose wrap around. You can also choose repeat edge pixels. There's a little bit of a difference, but in this case, it's just a little, it's kind of like a more of a subtle effect that we're applying here. Hit OK. Choose the displace.psd. Your displacement maps, by the way, they have to be PSDs. You can't just save a JPEG, as far as I know at least. Choose Open, and you can see it's kind of like wrinkled the flag up a little bit. It's kind of, it's helped mesh it to the, the, the shadows and highlights on his face. Now that we've meshed it to the shadows and highlights on his face, we're going to load that channel as a selection. So command or control click the thumbnail to that alpha channel. Go back to our layers panel and we're going to apply a layer mask. Layer, layer mask, reveal selection. So we've masked the flag nicely to his face. It sort of fades off a little bit as it gets to his hairline. That's great. We're going to select that layer and we're going to choose soft light as our blend mode. So it just meshes nicely over his skin, just kind of blends right in with the tones and textures on uh, on his face. Now we're going to merge all of our layers to a new layer, or both of our layers to a new layer by hitting Command Shift Option on the PC. This would be Control Shift Alt and the letter E. Boom, up to a new layer. Very cool. Now we're going to go image calculations again. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this. We're going to use the blue channel and the blue channel. But what I'm going to do is the layer is going to be that new layer, layer one, that new merged layer. So we're going to do layer one, uh, blending with layer one. We're going to use the blend mode. Let's go with multiply. Yeah, I like multiply. We're going to reduce the opacity a little bit, about 75%. That's cool. The result, however, is going to be a new document. So we're going to output a fresh document, which is going to be this black and white image. You see untitled 19, black and white image. It is, however, a multi-channel image, not an RGB image. So we need to change that. Image, mode, multi-channel. Nope, we can't go RGB, so we're going to go grayscale. And from grayscale, we can jump over to, you guessed it, RGB. I'm going to drag this image over. And I'm going to drop it in my original image. If I hold down the Shift key, when I drop, it's going to automatically align my image vertically and horizontally. So now I'm going to just close this Untitled 19. I don't need it. And here we are. With this, I'm going to call it the Calculation Layer. I can actually delete this Layer 1 now. We don't really need that. With cal Actually, you know what? I'm going to save it, though. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to save the Layer 1. With the Calculation Layer, I'm going to set it to the Blend Mode of Multiply. And you can see we're getting this really deep, rich, gritty effect, but obviously we're losing a ton of detail because it's just super duper dark. So I'm going to add a levels layer adjustment. I'm going to hold down my alter option key. And when I hover between the calculation layer and the levels layer, you see that icon? That's the clipping mask icon. That means that the adjustments that we're going to apply with this levels adjustment layer will only affect the calculation layer, which by the way, we've set to multiply. So let's go to this levels adjustment here and I'm going to boost the blacks a little tiny bit. It, this is really just a preemptive strike because we're going to crank up the output levels uh, quite a bit here. Uh, one of the other things I'm going to do is just move this over a little bit. I want to get it so uh, it's really just getting to the point where the highlights are. I'm, not, I'm losing absolutely no detail at all in these highlights. And now I'm going to grab the black output slider and I'm going to crank it way up to like, I don't know, 110, let's say, 111, something like that. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to close that. Now at this point, it's all about color grading and color correction. I know that I do want to reduce the contrast a little bit more because I want this to look a little bit more like that, I don't know, cinematic, HBO, Showtime, Nat Geo style. I don't know really how to describe it. So let's go with a curves adjustment layer here and let's just pull the black point straight up. 
All right, and we'll pull the white point straight down. Right, we really killed off contrast. Don't worry, we're going to bring some back in a second. We we'd rather have it on our terms. Actually, I'm going to go back into the curves adjustment. Let's do some color correction too, some color grading. Maybe we'll make uh, add a little cyan to this image. Let's add some a little green to it. We'll add a touch of green. That's kind of cool. Let's go blue. If we pull away from blue, we add yellow. So maybe a, maybe a, a touch of blue in the shadows, but then some serious yellow up in the highlights. That looks way too retro funky. Let's just add overall yellow. That's pretty cool. All right, after that, let's maybe try a color balance adjustment layer. And here we're going to add, let's add some red to the shadows. It's going to really darken up the image, add some of that contrast back. Maybe a little yellow as well to the, to the shadows. We're going to really gritty this thing up. Uh, you know what, I actually like a couple drips of magenta in the shadows as well. Let's go to the highlights. Let's add some yellow to the highlights. Let's add a little red to the highlights. Maybe a t just a kiss of green, maybe. Maybe magenta, green. Eh, I think I'll go magenta, just a little magenta in the highlights. I'm not going to mess with the midtones. Uh, and now let's go selective color. Now, actually, this is a good point to point this out. Selective color, a lot of times I'll come in here to the blacks color and I'll just reduce blacks and be like, yeah, man, look, faded, uh, Instagram effect, whatever. I don't want to do that at all in this case. Instead, I want to choose the whites channel, and I'm going to reduce the blacks in the whites channel. What is that going to do? Well, watch the highlight on his forehead. It's very subtle, but the highlights, the the very bright, the brightest highlights in the image intensify just a little bit. It just makes your highlights pop just a little bit more, gives it a little bite. Really a cool little uh, effect. We can also bring in like a channel mixer, right? We can begin like color grading and tweaking the colors. Channel Mixer, bring in some reds here, well, really some magentas, bring in a little red, right, intensify things, or maybe make it more blue-green. Really, this is all about personal taste. Just have a little fun with this. Um, and last but not least, we could, uh, we could go with, yeah, maybe another curves adjustment here. I'm going to lift the contrast a touch because I'm going to tweak the contrast. Maybe if we go with, like, a, a gradient map here, and I've got, like, this murky, vomity green to mustardy yellow to like almost white. And if I set that to like soft light and I really reduce the opacity and then I reduce the opacity of this below, I can really kind of control the overall contrast. And you can see, I mean, it's really pretty easy to go and get a really epic looking portrait very quickly. Uh, last but not least, maybe what we should do is just uh, again, merge all layers to a new layer. That's Command Shift Alt Control Shift. Uh, I'm sorry, Command Shift Option or Control Shift Alt on the PC and the letter E. Boom, we've got that. Uh, and you can go Command Shift or Control Shift U to make it black and white. Go Filter Other High Pass. Probably two pixels. Yeah, that'll be good for this image. And set it to a blend mode of overlay. I'll try to set it to overlay. There we go. I'm going to zoom into 100% here. Look at his skin. We can shut off that sharpening layer, turn it back on. Maybe we'll duplicate it, Command or Control J, and really just give it some sharpness and some bite. And it's kind of a, a neat little portrait, right? So if I hold down my Alter Option key and click the eyeball of the background layer, there's the image we began with. There's the image we have now. So with, you know, a few adjustment layers, just play with them, have fun. If you don't like one of them, get rid of it. Look at that. We can get rid of a few of these adjustment layers um, and just go through and see what we've got. And you can just you know, start turning things off, turning things on, and end up with a really, really cool effect and a really neat, epic-looking image uh, with a ton of mood to it. Uh, here in Photoshop. So for calculations yet again and for all these different adjustment layers and sharpening and epic poster style portraits, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.